there are a couple of ways on how you can access your Home Assistant from the outside. And here I will not be talking today about security, issues that you may have, instead we will be looking at what you can do if you have your own domain name. We'll start in a couple of seconds. As I've said at the beginning of the video, there are a couple of ways on how you can access your Home Assistant. The easiest way, of course, is if you are using Nabucasa account. And by that you are gaining remote access to your Home Assistant instance and you do not need to open any kind of port on your side of the network. This should be also the most secure way and it also helps by funding the Nabucasa and Home and Home Foundation project. If you do not want to use Nabucasa, there are also alternatives. For example, you can always use services such as DuckDNS, get yourself a third level domain on one of the hosted domains and open the port. The third option could potentially be to use Cloudflare or similar service, then have a VPN connection directly in your home. But the simplest way, if you exclude of course Nabucasa, and the cost of it is if you already have domain name, and yes, you can buy domain names very cheaply. The question or the problem with this one is how to update your domain name with your current public IP address, if your IP address of course is dynamic, and most people unfortunately have dynamic public IP addresses. That's why you can for example use integration, internal home state integration called Namecheap Free DNS. Even if you have bought your domain somewhere else, you can always transfer it and use this service also for free. It allows you to have dynamic DNS service for your own domain name and also tie it in directly in Home Assistant by making Home Assistant the integration or the service that will update the IP address when and if needed. So let's get started. In my case, I have a couple of domain names. Some of them are using this integration, other ones are not using the integration. And I will show you what you need to do after you transfer the domain into the name chip. If your domain is already in the name chip, it is pretty easy because all we have to do is we have to set up a couple of things. Select the domain name that you want to manage, click on manage, make sure that the name server is pointing to the name chip basic DNS server, click on advanced DNS, and if you do not already have A plus dynamic DNS record, click on add new record, select A plus dynamic DNS, for the host type in add, and for the IP address, type in your current public IP address. If you don't know what is your current public IP address, the easiest way to do is just Google what's my IP address. And the first listing is for the website called what's my IP address, click on it, and you should see your public IP address. Copy it and paste it inside the A plus dynamic DNS record. Don't forget to click on save to save the changes. Next, you need to scroll down to the section called Dynamic DNS, check that it is turned on, and here you will have Dynamic DNS password. Copy it, and we will be needing it now inside Home Assistant. As this service is currently not available as the UI integration, we still need to use the YAML or enter the code inside the YAML file. So let's get started with that. Open either file editor, if this is the editor of your choice, or I will be using Visual Studio Code Server. Go to your configuration YAML file and here insert the following code. Name cheap DNS, add two spaces or ident write, domain. Now insert your, your domain.com. It must match the domain name that you're using also with the name cheap and then also paste your password. The password is the key that we copied from the Namecheap DNS website as a dynamic password. Of course, this is also not a good practice because all the secrets should be inside the secrets file. So let's immediately fix it, delete this one, type in exclamation, secret, and then type in Namecheap DNS. This is the tag that we also need to insert inside our secrets YAML file. Or it should look something like this. Inside the secrets YAML file, we add hashtag Namecheap DNS password so that we don't forget what the next tag is, then copy the same tag we used previously, Namecheap DNS, and then just copy the dynamic password we copied from the Namecheap website. 
If everything is done, we should go to developer tools, check configuration and see if everything is okay. It is okay and now we can restart our Home Assistant. And after you have restarted your Home Assistant, on the integrations page you should see Namecheap free DNS integration. There are no entities or anything that you can do with this one. If you click on it, it will tell you that the integration was set up by using the YAML file, so if you want to change something, you need to do it inside the YAML file. Also, if you want to add additional sensor, no, you cannot do. If you click on Add Entry, it will tell you that you need to add this device via the configuration YAML file. And this is it. From now on, anytime the IP address changes, the public IP address of your network, it will update it on the Namecheap free DNS servers. If you need further information, or if you're having trouble with setting up everything on the Namecheap's website, on the integrations page, and the link will be down in the video description, there is a link on how do I set up host for Dynamic DNS. Click on it and you can read more documentation there. But remember that this one also requires you to open the port and forward traffic from the internet to your home assistant. If you are actually going to do that, there are also a couple of ways on how you can add a layer of security on top of it, and I would definitely recommend that you start using something called Nginx. It easily allows you to mask your ports, so port that is used inside is not exposed outside, it allows you to add SSL certificates to encrypt the traffic, etc, etc. But that's a topic for another video. If you're interested in that one, don't forget to leave a comment down in a comment section below, and I'll see what I can do about creating a video on that topic too. I really hope that you did find this video useful and that you will be using it in the future, of course, if you have your own domain name. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, suggestion, idea or better way on how to do things, don't forget to leave them down in a comment section below. If you did like this video, if you do find it useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it really means a lot to me and it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. And before I end with the video, as always, I would like to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, subscribed or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, as always, you can send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.